So I wanted to make a Dubis video, um, just because there seems to be a lot of chatter recently about how long he's got as a Leafs GM, what does he have to do to be successful. So I want to make a video of, of how long he legitimately, at least I think he has, um, to be successful. So I want to make a video on how long I think he has to be successful. And uh, yeah, uh, and obviously success is, is a different uh, measure uh, compared to the team that you're on. Um, so we're going to vary that level of success. Um, so let's start with step one, and that is to win a round, uh, which is probably one of the biggest steps that the Leafs need to get over. Because since the lockout, they have not won a single series. And there was a long time there that they didn't actually make the playoffs. Uh, 2006 to 2013, uh, didn't make it, and then started the run of pretty bad luck. Luck, or just not being able to get it done, I, I don't know what you look at it. 2013, I think, is a bit of an anomaly. That, that team overachieved that year, and, and it can be... You can see it with the fact that they didn't replicate it in the other seasons. Also, was the lockout shorten year, they were starting to come back down to earth. They had a very quick lineup and a lot of grit, which is teams that, um, which is teams that Brian Burke uh, create. Which, uh, in the middle of a of uh, a lockout and everyone coming back and not being rusty, it's a perfect team in the in the noughties. Um, in, in, you know, in in those teen years, it's kind of built like a team that was built ten years prior that would have had success. Not so much anymore. Um, but, yeah, they got to the playoffs. Obviously, the Boston thing happened. They came back. They won. It was still one of the craziest things I've ever watched in my life. But I think that's an anomaly from the Dubis years, obvious reasons. But Dubis does inherit it. They miss playoffs for the next three years, and then three years after that, uh, they lost to Washington, lost to Boston, and lost to Boston. In those Boston games, all of them went to Game 7, and they lost the deciding game. So they so they do get the deciding games. However, the year that they lost in Game 6 to the Capitals, they did a pretty good job. It was their first year really sort of showing that they're not this terrible team anymore. Um, everyone was still really, really young. They, they were very unproven. And, um, yeah, it was just... It was, it was kind of uh, one of those years. I remember they beat the Penguins to get in at the end of the season there. It was kind of one of those things that was just good to be there, and um, and that was fine. 2018 eliminated, and that's when Dubis takes over from that point on. So 2019, when they lose again to Boston um, in Game 7, just again, no one being able to get it done, and ran Jake Gardner out of town. Um, and then 2020, which is uh, really when um, things... COVID-wise obviously took off, and the play-in rounds happened... And even though they had an incredible comeback in Game 4, they couldn't get it done in Game 5. And arguably probably didn't belong to be there if after that Game 5 performance, where it was a few players that were standing up, but they couldn't be, get consistent performances out of anyone, or just consistent energy out of anyone. And, uh, yeah. So, Dubis has also made the coaching change. Babcock is out, Keefe is in. Um, so that, you know, that arrow's gone. That arrow's gone from the quiver. There's, there's no more arrow for that anymore, so... Uh, they, he's responded with the fact that they need grit, and we'll get to what he's done in, in the last offseason in, in a little bit. So how long does he have to win a playoff round? Otherwise, I think he'll be let go. Two years. Two years, I think he has to win a playoff round. I think he gets one more mulligan. I think COVID helps that, that mulligan. Um, especially with the way that the team is built. Uh, there are no currently, currently there is no team that has won a playoff round with a $10 million or more, uh, player contract on their books. Guess what team has three of them? The Toronto Maple Leafs. So this whole COVID thing's really done, it has stuffed them up. And, and that's the over-negotiating that if he was able to have it again, uh, might, you know, ask Matthews to, to maybe just go 11 even and, and Mana, you know, 10 even. And then all of a sudden you've got nearly $2 million up your hip pocket and that, that really does help this team a huge, immensely. Um, but yeah, I think two years to get this done. With a caveat. Little asterisks. Two years. But you also need to fix the goalie problem. And the goalie problem is Anderson's signed for next year and nothing past then. So if it's not going to be Anderson, look to trade Anderson out, maybe to Carolina, bring in a defender, and then go out and get a, def uh, get a goalie from somewhere. Uh, yeah. Some teams might not want to give up one to Seattle uh, of high quality, so you might be able to get something for there. But, you know, whether it's going to be a full-blown starter or not is another question. 
Um, yeah, you might be looking at the Islanders. Right, so we want to play F round. So we want to play F round. Yay. If, if he doesn't do it in two years, I think four, four kicks at the can if he doesn't get it done, I think it's it's time for him to go. I do think they'll give him one more chance if if he doesn't get it done. But, you know, past then, eventually the fans need a virgin sacrifice into the volcano, as Jeff Merrick always says, uh, which I love that analogy because it's so true. Um, so, yeah, so I'm thinking that. So getting past that point, let's say getting to a conference final. How long does he have to get to a conference final? How long before the success, the, the need to just not only win around to prove more? Three years. Which may seem a bit harsh. It may seem a bit like, well, hang on. He, you know, he just won around the year before if they get knocked out in the semis. That's three years from now to win uh, if you're meant to be a contender and you can, you know, spend to the cap and do all this stuff. You need to be contending. You, you need to be. Um, so... Yeah, three years. I feel like if he doesn't get that level of success, um, you would bring in someone at that point because then you've got the Matthews deal coming up in two years uh, from there. You've got, you know, Tavares and you've got Mana coming up two years after that, whether, you know, Tavares ends up staying and be a little bit older than him being in his late 30s. Uh, but you still got the Mana deal coming up then uh, in a year or two. So you want a bit of leeway for a new GM to be able to work out a strategy and a plan. You don't want to just throw him in here and be like, well, here you go. Um, and yeah, and then hopefully also the Morgan Riley situation has worked itself out. That's the other reason is that you still got Morgan Riley. And, and, and that to figure out. How many years does he get to make a cup final? I think that depends on how well this, the, the other seasons go. I think five years. I think he has five years to make a cup final if he can hit the other target. Uh, five years sort of puts it into the end of Tavares' deal. And, you know, they might be looking to, to sort of move on and rebuild at that point or retool on the fly. They'll still have Mana in his prime, Matthews in his prime. Everything will be pretty well good and dandy. Um, I think they're going to really miss Kapanen and a few other players that they traded away this season. But anyway, um, yeah, so I think four to five years is what they have there. And um, my theory behind that is that if he just keeps getting these little goals and, and inching forward, uh, if he does it that kind of way, like two years to win a playoff round, three years to get to the conference final, then I think he's got four or five to beat the cup. It's one of those things, but, like, if he keeps getting to the conference final and can't get past that little hurdle or, you know, the team that he, he manages can't get past that hurdle, it might be four years if they just can't get past that, that, that line. But usually, if you're around there, then eventually your time will come. So teams don't like to make that, that, um, those moves. But, yeah, so that's why I think, like, that's how long he has to be successful. Now let's just wrap up what team he's built this year and, and whether that's capable of winning a playoff round. I don't think it is. I know, I know, people are going to hate me in the comments, people are going to hate me, but I just don't love it. I don't, I don't think Thornton helps. I really don't, I, I just think it's an extra year on, and it's like, yeah, it's cheap, there's no risk to it, I just don't think it helps. Uh, Simmons, that's not the same Simmons that you're getting. It's really sad what the way his career has gone. I mean, I'd love to see a, a, a resurgence um, just because I think he's a great player, but I didn't. Mm. Uh, Muzzin's getting up there in age. He's almost 32. Uh, and you start to see defenders that play his style at 32 have the potential to drop away. So there's another issue there, TJ Brody. I, if he works out, that's good. Justin Hole is not an NHL caliber defenseman, in my opinion, after what I saw uh, with Columbus, and that's on the books for a bit. Bogosian, very interesting deal here. I think he adds a lot to the team, and that's someone that they brought in. But for them to have success, uh, Lettinen, who is uh, just tearing it up in the KHL, he needs to be NHL ready. He needs to be NHL ready more than Sunday. It definitely stands to him, and Dermot needs to figure out what he is in this, what he is in this lineup or else get traded for something else. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of where it's at. I think it's still Anderson's show. I don't think Campbell's going to take over. I don't know whether he's really ready to be a starter. I don't think he's, he's capable of it, but obviously with goalies, it's just a giant and it ends up working out. But yeah, I just, I felt a little bit underwhelmed with the deals that they were forced to make last year because they signed, uh, some players and, and, and I don't mind the fact that Dubas tries things. I, I don't have a problem with that. He changes his thinking and he goes with the times and some of the deals that he made, he would not have done two years ago. Definitely not. So he's growing this GM, but like, 
there's other things like training Kapan in a way that I think will hurt them. I think he, he gave more to that team than people le led to believe and um, and just offered a little bit more wing depth in case of injury. And, uh, yeah, that, that one might hurt. And the, the guy that they picked up in the draft mm, isn't exactly setting the world on fire early. It might still work out. He's still super young, but, you yeah. know. Anyway, guys, uh, that is the whole video. So if you did like this video, hit the like button. Otherwise, hit subscribe down below if you made it all this way and you haven't subscribed. We're up to 315. It is awesome. Uh, sort of growing this thing uh, nice and quick. Uh, two videos every day. Maybe a fan one if you guys have any comments or, or a video idea that you have for me, then just let me know. Tomorrow will just be the one video because uh, Australia versus India in the cricket is in my hometown. So Canberra, Australia. So... Uh, I'm definitely going to that, and I will be inebriated beyond inebriation. So there will be a few adult beverages being go going my way, which is well earned. It has been a very hard month or two with work, but I've got a job, so I'm not. I'm not complaining. It's just you know when you just like, I need a day. <laughs> I just need a day to just sit with my friends and talk absolute rubbish about nothing and just drink beer. And that's going to be perfect at the cricket. And uh, Australia's playing pretty well, so uh, knowing the rules, they'll probably be terrible when they come um, here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, yeah, really do appreciate it. Have a great day. See you, and bye.